Humans are now the apex species on Earth, having conquered land, sea, air, and space. Humans are the number one species on the planet, following God's command to conquer all the species on Earth. This process started, scientists claim, thousands of years ago, with the first representatives of the human species finding uses for rocks and sticks, repurposing them as valuable tools on their conquest of the world around them. This conquest started with simple uses for these rudimentary tools. A long stick became a walking stick, or was used to knock down fruit from trees. A sharp rock was used to cut animal fur. A piece of bone tied to a stick could pierce something. These applications, however rudimentary and elementary they might seem nowadays, were the start of the species that now dominates Earth and their journey towards complete conquest. One piece of information that baffles scientists to no end is that early humans were, somehow, hurting themselves and getting back up. These injuries weren't mere cuts, even. Humans were healing broken bones. In nature, when an animal breaks a bone, it's certain death. The animal has close to zero chance for survival, as the wilds are unforgiving and no animal is safe from Mother Nature's cycle. But early humans, as early as 350,000 years ago, were found to have broken bones that healed. Injuries as serious as broken skulls were found to be mended, and some were broken more than once. In the Pit of Bones, a cave network in what is now northern Spain, scientists and archaeologists have found the remains of at least 29 people at the end of a 13-meter deep shaft. Paleoanthropologists have unearthed thousands of broken pieces of bone, which add up to the partial skeletons of at least 29 members of a hominin species called Homo heidelbergensis, which may have been a common ancestor of our species and Neanderthals. The bones inside the cave belong to a varied mix of genders and ages within the group of Homo heidelbergensis. Paleoanthropologists can't decide if the pit was a burial site of some sort or just the result of floodwaters dragging the remains inside. Paleoanthropologists have managed to reconstruct the partial skulls of at least 20 of those long-dead hominins, and most of them appear to have suffered and survived bone-breaking blows to the head. This discovery is absolutely earth-shattering because it means that this prehistoric species somehow was able to tend to their wounded for long enough that they healed and not only capable, were willing to do so. A telltale sign of evolutionary protection of the members of a group. Head trauma leaves small dents in a human skull dents of about 2 centimeters that form inside the skull. These dents couldn't form if the skull belonged to a man who died immediately, and because 17 of the 20 skulls found inside Cima de los Huesos had the unmistakable dents, scientists were able to confirm that, indeed, the skulls belonged to early humans that survived violent hits to the head for long enough that their skulls healed and have the marks to show for it. Nohomi Sala, a member of Spain's National Center for Research on Human Evolution, and her team of experts commented on the lesions and dents found on the skulls within Cima de los Huesos. This type of non-fatal lesion is relatively common in the Paleolithic fossil record, they wrote. Healed fractures like the ones at Cima de los Huesos have shown up on the skulls of early members of our genus like Homo erectus as well as in Neanderthals and members of our own species. But the burial pit at Cima de los Huesos is rare because it gives us a chance to look at the whole group of hominins rather than just a few isolated individuals. That means paleoanthropologists like Sala and her colleagues can get an idea of how common these injuries were. It turns out that small skull fractures were common 350,000 years ago and seem to have been a fact of life for nearly everyone. Even the youngest members of the group at Cima de los Huesos had some already healed fractures, which suggests that everyone had a rough-and-tumble lifestyle from a young age. Male and female skeletons at Cima de los Huesos had about equal numbers of healed fractures, which suggests that men and women faced the same hazards with about the same frequency. 
This points to a dangerous, risky environment for the early humans, and that is only to be expected when you consider that these were truly early humans about three to 500,000 years ago. Cima de los Huesos also confirms reports from another region. The English Museum in Norwich reports having found the Olds hand axe in Northwest Europe, a tool reported to be about 500,000 years old. The tool, a remarkable black flint axe, is evidence that early humans humans had settled the region about 500,000 years before the current age, which actually places the tool in the pre-Neanderthal period. This discovery shows that the region was subjected to human settlement way before previously thought. The former timeline had set the region's conquest at about 300,000 years ago. The hand axe also points to one of the most intriguing signs of evolutionary influence. The design of the axe is not only utilitary, it's stylish. This fact alone is significant enough to get next turning. The axe was not made only to work, it was supposed to be nice to look at and handle. This points to a rudimentary idea of style and beauty already existing in the early human population in the Norwich region. Although we have no real evidence for a hierarchy in society at that time, a hand axe like this would have been an enormously valuable object. They would have had to hunt for their food and butcher the animal in order to eat and get material for their clothes and shoes. The axe would have been a very important tool that would have been sharpened and reused over a period of time. Butchery sites of mammoths have been found on the North Norfolk coast around the same area the hand axe was found, so we have several flint tools in the collection, reports Collie Moody, learning manager of the Norwich Castle Museum. But this is the star of the show. This is the oldest one. Discoveries like the one in Spain and Norwich shine a light into a dark period of human evolution. Because of the degrading effects of time on the remains of human and animals from the pre-Neanderthal and Neanderthal periods, as well as generations before ours not knowing or caring about the archaeological finds they might have stumbled upon, a lot of information from this period is lost forever. However, this doesn't mean that we can't stop searching, much to the contrary. It is our job as humans to continue to unravel the mysteries of God's creation, learning more and more about what surrounds us and what we can gather from the lives of those before us that can be used to further humanity. The story of the first tools found in Norwich and the surviving Homo heidelbergensis is another proof that science and the pursuit of knowledge are necessary aiming to reveal the secrets of the human race and to further our knowledge of the species we belong to and to the world we live in. Earth is a beautiful place, full of wonder and knowledge to be seen and learned, and the indomitable human spirit longs for the discoveries. What do you think about this video? Leave your theories and opinions on the comments below.